Hi folks, we're going to talk about a little extension with the, uh, with the refraction that has some really some great technological applications. Um, and well, we have to set a couple of criteria. Um, this isn't a criteria, but let's imagine we have ourselves an incident or an incident ray here. There's a normal. Here's our incident angle. But let's make this. Uh, oh yeah. Now we know that no matter what when light or any wave hits the boundary between two media at least part of the wave reflects right we know the law of reflection right it says those two angles in this case theta r meaning reflected those two angles are the same now let's assume however for this case that n1 is greater than n2 all right so the refracted ray here let's see this is a uh, more to less bends away from the normal, right? So maybe something like that. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Well, let's take that incident angle and make it bigger. Right? It was this. We've made it a little bigger. Our reflected angle gets bigger by, uh, you know, of course it does. Well, our refracted ray perhaps does um, something like that. As the, in, as the uh, incident angle gets bigger, the refracted angle gets bigger as well. It gets closer to the boundary. Right? But there's some angle, there's some incident angle where it becomes just big enough that there's actually no refraction because the refracted angle, um, you know, maybe maybe got to maybe got to you know eighty nine point nine 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 degrees, but as theta incident gets you know just bigger than that, well, actually the reflected the refracted angle gets to ninety degrees, and there actually isn't refraction because the well. What would have been the refracted ray doesn't get into the other substance. All right, and so when that happens, none of the light goes across the boundary, and you get what's well. What all of it does is all of it reflects, and you get what's called total internal reflection. Now notice a little formatting. You know, notice the thickness of this ray that I'm actually using to depict how bright the light is. And notice here, right? We get a you know a thicker line coming in. You know, a certain amount of light coming in. Well, part of it goes through. Part of it reflects. Really. Some of it goes through, the rest of it reflects. Or actually, some of it reflects, the rest of it goes through. So in this case, well, all of it reflects because none of it goes through. By through, I mean across the boundary. Okay? And this angle, this incident angle, that has become just big enough that the, well, that the refracted angle gets 90 is called the critical angle. It's an angle above which you will only ever get, or at, at which and, and above which, all that ever happens is total internal reflection. All right. Um, um, So this is responsible for a few phenomena, um, this idea of well, the, making sure that light doesn't go across boundaries but only reflects and stays in a certain substance. Um, and one of those is that this is how uh, fiber optic communication or fiber optic cables work. 
All right, so this is supposed to represent a fiber optic cable. And what that is is quite literally like, uh, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a wire because it's not made of metal, but it's like a wire of glass or some sort of uh, material that light can travel through. All right, it's flexible, it can be bent. You can't bend it really at, at really sharp corners, but if you have it, you know, sort of in a bendy sort of form like this, well, if this is a light ray, what happens is that light ray can get to this surface, and here's a normal, and this angle, well, is bigger than a critical angle. Let's just say it is. And so what happens is, even if this were just literally a clear, you know, clear glass tube or plastic tube, with air on the outside of it, well, that light would not get out into the air. What it would do is just all reflect at the same as the incident angle until it gets to here, let's say. And here's another normal, and that's a nice big angle, bigger than our critical angle. So this light reflects and gets here. And, well, you know, let's assume that's still bigger than the critical angle. And so this light just travels through this fiber optic cable. And in a way that's similar to how you how radio waves can carry a signal by changing the shape of the wave a little bit, called modulation. Um, these light waves can be made to carry a signal also, and the signal can move super duper fast, right? And we can direct exactly where it goes, as opposed to radio signals that just go everywhere, right? We can send a signal through a cable from point A to point B, such that it's not accessible to everybody, um, but information can be directed from one place to another. You know, that's just how internet traffic, you know, not wireless obviously, but, um, you know, hardwired internet traffic travels through fiber optic cables like this that make use of total internal reflection. Okay? One thing we haven't, that you don't have a slide for, but it's also um, why diamonds are as sparkly as they are. You might notice that diamonds have a really big index of refraction, 2.92, and that actually makes the critical angle for diamond, as long as the diamond's in air, which lots of diamonds are, um, something like 24 degrees. So if light is incident from inside a diamond on a, on a surface, if the angle is any bigger than 24 degrees, the light doesn't go through the surface. And what that can allow for is something like this. If light, let's say, comes directly through this top surface and hits this bottom surface of a diamond, as long as that angle is bigger than 24 degrees, well, the great thing is the light won't go through the bottom surface of the diamond. You know, if it were to refract and, you know, bend, that would be a more to less bend away from the normal. Well, it just doesn't happen as long as the angle in here is bigger than 24 degrees, that light doesn't go through the bottom. And, uh, you know, diamond cutters for centuries, I guess, have, I don't know if they've known that, but what they know is how to cut these facets. They're called facets in diamonds, such that this light will reflect off of here and maybe hit this surface. And, and that angle is way bigger than 26. So this reflects out and does, you know, something like that. And where does this light go? Well, it hits you in the eyeball. There's your eyeball. But what it doesn't do is leave and go down here so that you'd never see that light again. So light that comes in from the top, for diamonds especially, tons and tons of it ends up coming back out this way. You see that light, and boy, that diamond looks sparkly because of total internal reflection that happens inside that diamond. Neat, right? Right. Onward. Uh, here's a sort of typical problem, a beam of light incident from air at the surface of the liquid. The angle of incidence is 30 degrees and the angle of refraction is 22. Oh, find the critical angle for the liquid when surrounded by air. All right, well, this is kind of two problems. So first, what we're given is enough. Uh, here's an incident ray in air. And here's a refracted ray in a liquid. Theta I, theta R. So I would start here with uh, Snell's law solution. Say N air sine theta air is N liquid sine theta liquid. And uh, let's see. Oh, we're looking for 
So this can find us n liquid, n air sine theta air over sine theta liquid. Right, right, and that gives us that gives us a liquid index of 1.33. Water has an index of 1.33. I know that, so I'm sure that makes sense. Now the critical angle for the liquid, and what that means is if we bring, well, there's some angle where if we bring the light from in the liquid, there's some critical angle such that well the refracted angle gets to 90 degrees. Right? So when we went from air to liquid, this way, less to more, that ray bends toward the normal. But when we go liquid to air, more to less, that ray bends away from the angle. And again, at the critical angle, the refracted angle equals 90. So if we do another Snell's law and say N air sine theta air equals N liquid sine theta liquid, well, we know N liquid we're looking for this critical angle in the liquid equals n air but what happens is this turns to 90 it is 90 degrees at the critical angle so this says that um, well theta c if i sign if i solve for if i solve for a theta critical it's the inverse sine of this stuff divided by that. Well, n air is 1. Sine of 90 is 1. Yeah? So if we do the inverse sine of the inverse of 1.33, well, you get theta critical is 40. 8.5 degrees. Okay? What will always happen in general when you're doing a critical angle thing uh, so in general, right, we're going to say that well, N1 sine theta 1 is n2 sine theta well why don't we say critical let's say we're looking for a critical angle in substance 2 right well this will mean this will have to mean whoops that we're looking at in n1 a refracted angle of 90 degrees is n2 sine theta c now what i'm making sure that or what i'm talking about here is that well, I'm saying that one of the substance, oops, one of the substances doesn't have to be air. All right. Now, this is just one. Right. So in general, we can say that a critical angle, whoops, a critical angle is the inverse sine of well, just n1 divided by n2. Right. That's what we just did here. N1 happened to be one. Right? But what has to work for this is, well, there are only, um, you can only take the sine of something, or no, there are only angles who have signs that are less than 1. So it means that N1 has to be less than N2. I mean, you can't, if you typed in, oh, gee, what's the inverse sine of uh, 3 over 2? Well, it wouldn't work. You'd get a, it would, your, your calculator would say, can't do it. Right? So it just sort of proves to you what we said before, that it only happens when you go from a bigger end to a smaller end. It being that the light can be totally internally reflected. Okay? But what I recommend is don't bother just memorizing that. Just solve the problem as a Snell's Law problem. And just use the fact that the refracted angle gets to 90 when the incident angle is what we call the critical angle. Okay? Okay, people. Adios.